So we are very excited to host this Women's History Month cocktail demo with our returning food and drink expert, Geo Banks Weston. Geo is a Philadelphia-based food and lifestyle blogger covering everything from cuisine and cocktails to interior design. Uh, he is also the creator and host of Table 86, a podcast centered on Black and other underrepresented creatives of color in the food and beverage industry. I will turn things over to our mixologist, uh, Geo. <laughs> <laughs> so you are so kind. I am by no means a uh, trained mixologist or bartender. I, I never went to school uh, for that. I just like to drink a lot and I like to um, purchase cocktail books and get them as gifts. So I've become, especially in COVID, a bit of a, a home bartender, if you will. Um, my, trade, my trade has been built all in the home. Um, but I really want to thank you all again for having me. Uh, I know when you reached out and we were talking about this, uh, me coming back and possibly doing this kind of wind down with one or two cocktails, I thought, you know, it is Women's History Month. And as I started looking around my house and thinking about the women that I've interviewed for my podcast, I thought it would be an awesome way to pay homage to the women who have influenced me um, and who continue to help me build my skill in cocktail making. Um, as you said, I am a, uh, a food blogger. Um, I host a podcast, the Table 86 podcast, where I talk to mostly Black and underrepresented professionals in the food and beverage industry. And so I like to have an educational component to that. So I hope I share something new uh, today that you, you find helpful as you make cocktails at home. Um, so today I want to do a couple things. Um, I'm only going to make two cocktails, uh, and I'm hoping that this will be pretty interactive. I see we have quite a bit of people on the call. And um, while I'm making the cocktails, I want to highlight some women-owned businesses, just a few, and uh, some women-owned, women-authored cocktail books uh, that I think if you're into making cocktails, you should go out and purchase uh, because they are phenomenal. Um, but to get started, and, and just like as a, as a uh, low-pressure icebreaker, can people throw into the chat what their favorite spirit is? Vodka, tequila, vodka, bourbon, vodka, Tito's. Tito's is one of my favorites too. Um, I'm seeing a lot of vodka, Baju. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so I'm seeing a lot of vodka and I'm seeing bourbon. I do have a bourbon cocktail um, but I am actually a huge, huge gin fan. Uh, how many people are fans of Blue Coat Gin? Anybody? Oh, I see, I see thumbs up. Okay, great. Um, so if you've ever been to the Blue Coat Distillery, it is absolutely gorgeous. And they have a cocktail there known as the Betsy Ross, a, a famous Philadelphian woman. Um, and one of my signature cocktails was actually inspired by that. And I call it the Ginsberry Cocktail. Um, because it is, as the name suggests, gin and berry simple syrup. So uh, what I like to make is a mixed berry simple syrup. So it's typically raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries, um, and about two cups of water and a cup of sugar. And I boil it for about five minutes altogether until the, the sugar um, dissolves. And then I throw in the berries and I let it steep for about 45 minutes. So I put it on and then like I watched some, some television. Last night I watched Real Housewives of Atlanta while, while I made this. Um, the great thing about it is if you don't like one of the berries, you, you can season the taste. You can make this mixed berry simple syrup with whatever types of berries you like. And um, I actually added something extra special yesterday. I added some mint because I'm thinking of spring with the warm weather. So this is actually a mixed berry mint syrup, simple syrup. So this cocktail actually features about two parts of gin, one part of the berry mint simple syrup, and the juice of about two to three lime wedges. Um, you do not render a lot of juice from um, <laughs> lemons or limes, 
But um, I think this just gives it an extra little bite. The, the bitterness really cuts that sweetness in the cocktail. And for gin, you'll notice that I'm actually using a mixing pitcher. Um, I'm using a mixing pitcher because a good friend, uh, her name on Instagram is actually Will Drink for Travel. She's a, a black female mixologist based in Baltimore. And she once told me that you should always use a mixing pitcher for, for gin instead of a mixer because the mixer bruises the gin. And what that means is when you're like, you know, you're mixing, um, it gets some air bubbles in it, which can create some bitterness and, and transform the flavor of the gin. So I tend to use a mixing pitcher for it. And I stir for about 30 seconds. And so what I like to do is serve this cocktail in a, coupe, a coupe glass. Um, I think coupe glasses are like the, the most sophisticated of glasses. Um, they're really cute to hold. I like them out at restaurants, but um, being in the pandemic or the panorama, as um, I like to call it, I, I think that uh, it evokes that feeling of having a fancy drink, even though I'm sitting at home. And I just pour it in. I should be straining it. I should not be, um, my strainer isn't, I couldn't find my strainer before the call. But um, one thing I also like to do is I hate a naked cocktail. Like I hate a cocktail without any garnish. And a friend of mine, uh, the cocktail snob on Instagram, another woman, <laughs> she introduced me to these dehydrated garnishes. It's actually a brand called uh, dehydgarnish.com. At full disclosure, this is not a, a woman owned business, but it is, um, they make many, many, many different dehydrated fruit garnishes specifically for cocktails. Today in my Ginsberry, I'm gonna throw in a little blood orange, and a little lime. And I just think that's a great way to up level up level a cocktail. So that is very simply uh, the Ginsberry cocktail um, and some of the women who, who brought this to life. So I have another, awesome, thank you for posting their Instagram feed in, in the chat. Um, I'm also asking, obsessed, ask, I'm obsessed with ahead. the color of this drink. It is, she's beautiful. You know, um, it, it gives me a moment. I, I love, I love a good, bright, vibrant cocktail. Um, just the color makes me happy, and that mixed berry syrup really has that that like um, berry color. I can't even call it anything else. It's like it's truly a berry color. So that's what I what I like. Um, throwing it into the uh, chat for for those. What are your favorite? vodka brands and gin brands um, because every time I'm in in a class I learn about a new one. So Gio can I ask a question while folks are putting that in the chat? So sure. the recipe you just made would you be able to have you ever tried that with vodka like as opposed to like for those folks who aren't gin fans um, and to Emily's point, I love the red. It's Venture Cafe red, so we may need a signature <laughs> cocktail, but I'm not a huge gin fan. So is there an opportunity to substitute the liquor and still get a similar experience or a good experience? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this is equally as good. My husband actually, um, he likes gin, but he actually really likes vodka um, as well. And he makes a similar cocktail with vodka. Um, he also isn't a fan of blueberries. So he typically does, uh, the original recipe with the Betsy Ross is um, strawberry simple syrup, elderflower uh, gin liqueur, and I, I believe lime. So you could definitely do this with vodka, um, a uh, simple syrup of your choice because simple syrups are, are versatile any, with any berry. And then I would always include a citrus. So I, I, I think that that would be very good. I have a question. I have never heard of bruising um, of a liquor. Are there other alcohols that I should not be putting? I mean, I felt so fancy to even have a shaker and I'm like, wait, <laughs> I need to think more critically about when I use it. 
So, so it's funny. Um, I know mostly with gin because um, that's what I drink the most. And that's the advice I got. We were actually in a gin tasting class and gin cocktail class. Uh, I have heard that with certain bourbon drinks, you want to stir and not shake. Um, probably for similar reasons, because it, it might not bruise the bourbon, but because shaking it might take away from um, the flavor you want to evoke in that drink. Um, so I definitely do think that it applies to other types of spirits. Gotcha. Um, and one last question, and I just sure. thought this is a safe space to ask this. I, what does it mean when you get a drink straight up I've never known yes. the answer. I know that's probably a dumb question. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a, a dumb, a dumb question. And I, I think it's a good question. I hope I answer it correctly. Cause like I said, I, I'm not a, a bartender by trade, but I believe it's when you serve it um, up in a glass, like you pour it into the glass. So I have like a, a tall glass here. Yeah. Um, um, but there might be somebody on the call who can, um, cause I have a friend who gets a kettle one martini straight up. And I just saw somebody put kettle one in it. So I do welcome if anybody else, if I answered it incorrectly for, for anybody else to explain that. I would say no rocks. So no rocks. Okay. Up, like up for me is um, like I drink a Tito's martini up. Um, and so it would be no rocks in it. Got it. Good to yeah. know. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So I also wanted to highlight um, the gin that I used in this cocktail. So I told you that I, I love Blue Coat, but I recently oh. learned of, yeah. um, <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, I recently learned of Navy Strength Gin, um, and I had never heard of Navy, Navy Strength Gin before. Um, and apparently it's a gin with, with a, um, a stronger flavor and a little more spice to it. Um, and I was lucky to find one at um, the liquor store and it's called Heyman's Gin. And I will say in comparison with the other gins, it does have a stronger flavor. So if you are a, a gin lover, I definitely recommend this. But where I learned about Navy Strength Gin is actually in... This book, um, <laughs> this book, it's called Tiki and it's by a woman by the name of Shannon Mustafer or Mustafe. I, I am not 100% sure how to pronounce her last name, but she is a black woman bartender. Uh, she was the beverage director for uh, Gladys's uh, rum bar in New York City. And unfortunately that restaurant closed um, due to the pandemic, but um, this book is absolutely fantastic. It, she takes tiki cocktails. So a lot of people think about tiki cocktails as rum cocktails that you enjoy when you're on a resort or when you're in a warm weather climate. And while she does have some classics in there, daiquiris, um, uh, she has, so, sorry, she has daiquiris, she has Mai Tais. Uh, mai Tais are something my grandma used to drink. <laughs> but um, she also has taken those recipes and really up-leveled them with some really interesting spirits. And what I love the most about this book um, is if you look, if I can show, she has some really great photography of the drinks. It's just so pretty. Um, and as a um, food photographer and blogger, I, I, I love that part of the book as well. The other thing that she does is in the back, I told you about simple syrups that I use. She actually has a whole section full of simple syrups that are made from ingredients that are often found in the Caribbean um, because she is of Caribbean descent. So I highly recommend it. Another fu fun fact about this book is that she is the first, this was the first book published by a black working bartender in the last hundred years. So I, I, I know that's a lot, but I, I um, She's, she's won awards for it. And, and I, I strongly highlight her. Uh, I strongly support anything she does. She is on Instagram as well at Shannon um, Mustafa is just her name, but uh, the book is called Tiki. And I see Angela, you posted it. That you found that an, uh, Amazon link quick. That's actually where I got this book from. So um, I, I definitely recommend purchasing it. But if you're not into Tiki cocktails, 
Another book that I wanted to highlight is uh, this book called Regarding Cocktails. And um, the book uh, is a collection of cocktails by Sasha Petros uh, Petrosky, who is actually a male, but, um, and I'll get to, to why I'm covering this in a second, but he's considered the innovator or influencer of modern cocktail culture in the 21st century. And um, unfortunately in 2015, he died of a heart attack uh, three months after he got married and his wife, Georgette, carried on and published this book and his legacy. And um, it's about 75 cocktails that uh, either are classic cocktails he perfected or um, they're by bartenders that he worked with um, who created some of the cocktails. It's a great book if you really wanna start to understand uh, how to make cocktails and how to make some simple cocktails. There are also several female bartenders from New York and beyond highlighted in the book. So I, I recommend this book as well. My husband actually got this for me as a gift. I believe he bought it at CB2 um, because that's typically where he gets my cocktail gifts from. Um, but you can find it online as well. Another thing I, I like is there are no pictures, but uh, one thing that she does is, if I can show it, each recipe is illustrated with the amount of liquor um, you would put, amount of each liquor or ingredient you would put. So if you, if you look at every page, it's almost like a, a diagram of how to make it, which I think is really cool. Um, and especially like having a background in education that, that I like that a lot. All right. So who is ready for, I see somebody said, yo, Charlie Lee. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a really cool design feature. So who's ready for the second cocktail? I know some people said they are, are bourbon drinkers up in, uh, up in here, so uh, we can go into that. Um, this cocktail, I'm actually gonna make it in, in the glass itself, uh, but this cocktail is a take on lemonade slash a bourbon smash. Um, and a bourbon smash is like an old fashioned with um, sometimes smashed up berries, um, in it. Um, today I'm going to do it with blackberries. And one thing I love to do with cocktails is muddle. Um, I love muddling. It's very therapeutic. And I just attended a bourbon class where we made a similar cocktail and he taught me the right way to muddle. So um, if you don't have a muddler, I, I have just a, a wooden muddler, but if you don't have a muddler, you can always use the back of a spatula, like a wooden spatula or the back of a spoon. Um, it produces the same result. But what he told me to do, I put about uh, four or five berries in here, is to press down and then turn. You render more, ju uh, more liquid, more juice of the berry that way. So if you press down and then turn until you till the uh, berries are all smashed up and um, at the bottom and you have a decent amount of liquid. So I'm doing the quick and, and dirty version today. I would probably spend another minute or two muddling, but it's, it's literally just pressed down and, and turn. Um, then this cocktail features one part of a blackberry sage simple syrup. So this is all blackberries, a little bit of sage made it the same way. So two cups of water, one cup of sugar, um, boil until all the sugar is dissolved. And then I threw in about a, a third of a cup of um, blackberries and a little bit of sage, and then let that steep for 45 minutes. You also want the juice of one lemon. So as you know, like lemons don't render um, <laughs> much juice. It takes a lot. So what I actually do is, is I heat up the uh, lemon for about um, 45 seconds. You'll notice a the theme, 45 minutes, 45 seconds. Slice it in half and then I'm able to get it. Uh, the heat makes it a little juicier and I'm able to get more um, of the lemon juice. So I actually did that before the call. So I have, as you can see, that's literally how much juice was rendered from a full lemon. 
And then for my bourbon lovers, uh, one shot of bourbon, and this is all equal parts. So equal parts lemon, equal parts simple syrup, and equal parts sugar, um, or uh, equal parts lemon juice, equal parts bourbon, and equal parts of um, this very simple syrup. I'm then going to add ice. I'm actually, my ice is starting to melt, so I'm gonna use my hands. I do have, guys, it's COVID, so I have like tons of um, hand sanitizer in my kitchen. I have like a gallon jug of it. Um, <laughs> and then I'm just gonna stir, again, for about 30 seconds to a minute to make sure that everything comes together and that it gets, you know, well blended. One thing that I, I do for this one is because it's kind of, I want to evoke that lemonade feel. And as we know, lemonade, um, a lot of times we put water in it um, with the lemon juice to kind of cut the flavor. Instead of using regular water, I actually use uh, tonic water. And I actually dropped this right before the class. I was hoping that it wouldn't, wouldn't burst. And I just top it with a little bit of tonic water after I, after I stir. And then I think uh, I think you guys will really love the color of this too. It's a little darker than um, the uh, the gin's berry cocktail, but um, I really like the color of this as well. And then you can garnish this one. Um, I have some of those limes here, but I tend to garnish this with some fresh uh, slices of lemon. And I would typically do this in a bigger glass. Um, but I, I decided to do it in small glass today. Um, drink in moderation, folks. So um, <laughs> this is the uh, cheers. This is the um, my version of uh, a blackberry. Uh, I had on. I had told uh, you, Emily, that it was going to be blackberry lavender, but I couldn't find lavender, so it became a blackberry sage lemonade. It's very good. <laughs> that was beautiful. I love that. That looks amazing. I also, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cheers to Gio and for, for walking us through. I also want to point out, uh, Tracy had found that the Tiki uh, cocktail book at Harriet's Bookstore, um, which is a Black female yes. bookstore in Philadelphia. So uh, double whammy on that one. So I would encourage folks to um, explore that. Um, but yeah, Gio, these, these are beautiful drinks. I need to up my game. <laughs> And we love your yeah. crystal shot glasses too. Oh, thank you. Um, these were a gift from an aunt of mine. Um, and I, I actually really like them a lot. I, I think they add some character to my bar. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, and, you know, I know we have some time at the end um, just because I have a little bit of time and because you mentioned Harriet's bookstore and I was going to mention them. I had one other book that I wanted to tell you about. Um, and it's called uh, Jubilee. It is actually, um, it's by Tony Tipton uh, Martin, um, who is a uh, researcher and journalist of African-American food history, specifically in the South. But this book has a whole section just dedicated to cocktails. And you can also get this at Harriet's. Um, and if you are, you know, it's getting warm out, which I'm excited about. She has a lemonade in there. She has a champagne cocktail. She has a lot of uh, cocktails with tea. So I highly recommend this book as well. And you can also get it at Harriet's Bookshop. Just drop that link in the chat as well for any folks <laughs> um, looking to not support Amazon right now, but Harriet's yeah. Bookstore. <laughs> I'm sorry for putting an Amazon link. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, folks, any, I mean, dude, this was really awesome. I feel like I need to, again, really up level. My shot glasses are from, you know, uh, gift shops. I need to up level every, every part of my bar. <laughs> um, are there any questions? I know we just have a few minutes left. Are there any questions um, for Gio about any of the books that were mentioned or the drinks, how beautiful they are? Um, <laughs> I just want to say this was awesome. Thank you. Um, oh, you're welcome. Um, and thank you. I can't thank you enough for having me. And Michael, I see your, your note in the chat. Um, it was my pleasure to be here. Um, I, I know you, you guys put my things out, but you can follow me at Geo's Table um, 
I most likely will highlight some of some of these books just in case you don't get to get to uh, the link um, <laughs> tonight. And um, but like follow me, I follow back. And if you have any questions after the course, please feel free to reach out as well. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Um, and thank you all. And thank you, Gio, again. Cheers. Thank you. Have a great night. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>